Now we're going to go key on. Now when I hit sport, I have my widgets configured. So here's what I face. I have an M menu. In today's video, we're taking a unique turn with my BMW G2330i. Having boosted its performance to rival the G80 M3, the next step is to match this enhanced speed with the right technology. I'll introduce you to a compact yet transformative module that does just that. This upgrade not only complements the car's newfound power, but it also brings in advanced tech features reminiscent of the M3. Join me as we delve into how this small addition makes a big difference, perfectly aligning the 330i's capabilities with top tier automotive tech. All right, so it's called the M-Track module. So it comes in the box, you have the module itself and a harness to intercept your factory wiring and a connector. Here's a closer look at it. We're gonna have to do some coding to make it all come together, but let me start with getting this installed physically in the car. I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested in this. We'll be working on the passenger side of the car. Get yourself a flathead, rotate these 90 degrees, pull down, disconnect your map light, unclip that. We're gonna remove this plastic piece and this plastic piece here. Here's a clips inside there. This just kind of notches in right here. And then there's one at the back. Pull this up and out of the way. Once you pop these two clips off, there's one up at the top. Goes here, here, and then up here. Now we're going to be working with this connector here. On either side, there's a place to squeeze. So do that while rotating this green rocker down and pull back. Over here, we're going to have to slide this connector out of this. Put a pick tool on the side here. That way you can slide the connector forward. Same goes for here. Slide these out. You'd want to disconnect your negative battery terminal before you do any of this. Separate these two pieces. So if you notice right here, it's labeled 36. And then the one beside it is 35. These have to come out. So let's start by removing 36 yellow. Use a pick tool and just press on this part here. Bring over the included harness. Insert the green where the yellow was on 36. Let's go after the one beside it that was black and yellow. And then blue is going to go in the place of that on 35. We're going to go after the ground now, which is going to be 32. In place of this, you're going to insert the black on the included harness. Now we'll flip this around the other way. We're going to count seven in. Seven. We're going to remove this yellow red. And we'll put the red one in place of that. Bring this piece that comes with the module. If you insert it here, you'll kind of see what colors have to go where. So red was the yellow red. You're going to want to insert that right here. Now if you go to the next color, black, insert that beside it. Now the next one up is green. That was the solid yellow. And lastly, we have yellow black. Put that in there, snap this down. Now insert this into this. Now we'll reassemble this, reinsert this into this. Bring this back to the car, rotate it up slightly so it starts to engage. We're good to go. Now we'll bring the module over, plug this in. Okay, now we gotta just tuck this stuff away. Now bring our trim pieces back into place. Now this will work on pretty much all G-Series cars, but keep in mind that you either have to have assisted driving professional with the LED indicators here, or just standard cruise control. If you have active cruise control plus, it won't work. These should not be blank on your car. They'll tell you if it's going to fit. By the way, doing this coating is not going to just enhance our cluster. It's going to enhance the heads up display view as well. We're ready to start coating the car, so reconnect your battery, and I recommend you leave your trunk open. Set the car up on a battery charger. So that was the physical installation, but now we got to do some coding and it is advanced coding. It requires ESIS. I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. If you have ESIS set up, this is an ICOM cable. We're going to need that. So to start with, you're going to triple tap the start button. It's going to say diagnostic mode active on your cluster. Hit, make sure you turn off your headlights and your climate control. We're going to be loading up ESIS. Okay, so this is engineering level software. There's no fail safes. If you click one thing, it's not gonna ask you, are you sure if you got something wrong? You can't use Beamer code or anything with the dongle. You have to use ESYS Connect. You wanna narrow in on S18A if you have a G20, and then you wanna eliminate all the directs. You just want gateway, and then you will have two choices based on the files that you load on your computer. You're gonna have the second latest and the latest software. Hit Connect. We've established a connection. First thing you always do is read the vehicle order, which is basically how the car is configured. Save this. So we're going to put it in a folder and we're going to call it G20 FA stock. Save this. Next thing you want to do is read your ECU tree and we have to save this before we have to go over here to expert mode and click on VCM, basically how the vehicle is configured. 
and we'll click on master and read the i steps this tells me that the car shipped from the factory with software from november 2018 and it tells me that it's currently on july 2021 the g80 came out in november 2020 so it's got new enough software that i can do the coding now assuming you didn't have that scenario what you do here is click on complete flash you would isolate your combi module and your infotainment module to be able to flash newer software or you could do an over the air update or take it to the dealer to get it updated tell the software what the car ship from the factory with in my case that's 11524 181524 we have two versions of software to flash to it based on the files that i loaded on my computer so i'm going to take the oldest one and i'm going to ask it to calculate what modules need to be updated it takes a while to figure it all out it goes through every module and asks it what software do you have on there there's different levels there's bootloaders configuration files hardware version numbers software files if it's blue, it's outdated, and if it's red, it's what it would change it to. I had to update the software on my DCS module. As you can see, everything's black because nothing needs to change. But now that we've calculated this, we want to save this. SVT after. We have to click on calculation for TAL calculation. Save this. You go to expert mode, and then you'll go to TAL processing. That last file that we just calculated, we're going to put that first. It's going to be in here uncheck everything if you accidentally hit that start button it's going to code everything and it would be a big nightmare for you next thing you're going to load here the after how things would end up and then it needs to know what the car is equipped with as a backup so then we're going to go here and grab the stock fa but you'd be selecting here decom b and then you want to update this HUMGU. You could click start. And it's going to push the software so you can start coding the car. Proceed at your own risk. You should have a battery tender, not just a battery charger. You should have your trunk open. I'm actually going to show you me updating the HUMGU or the head unit media graphics unit to a newer version of software just so you guys can see what's involved. Just the infotainment system and we're going to do the software update. And you can see the progress right there. 14 minutes approximately. So that's the scariest part is the bootloader. If that doesn't go well, then the thing's bricked, but we got past that. That's what the infotainment system looks like while this is happening. Okay, and that's what you'd want to see. Okay, now we're going to proceed as if you already had new enough software in your car. So we're going to connect under expert mode coding. I'm going to read this. It's automatically active. Save it. I call it stock coding. Now I'm going to read it again. Save it again. But this time we're going to call it G20FA M-Track for the module. So that's going to be the modified version. We'll save this. Now we can edit this. When you click edit, it's going to bring you over to the FA editor. So if you expand this out, if you want to see if a car is fully loaded, just look how long this is. It tells you everything that the car has. We're going to edit this and we're going to tell it that it's a G80. We're going to come over to the type and modify this. I'm telling it it's a 31AY, which is the code for a G80. Now if we go over here and click calculate FP, that's the vehicle profile. We're going to see if it's happy with it and if it's actually going to consider it legit. I calculated it and it said, okay, fine. We're going to click save. I'm not flashing this to the car. I'll show you what we're going to do. Over here under expert mode coding. So now it's using this. I can read the ECU trees. So I'm able to encode this information. I don't have to flash the modules to be able to tell it what it is, but I'm going to collapse everything. We're going to open it back up and we're just focused on the D combi. Now we want to write the FA only to one individual module. So this file is loaded. If I were to click code on the combi, it's going to say, okay, fine, I'm a G80, but the rest of the modules are just going to be G20. We're going to do that now. If we got it wrong, we could always recode the stock file. So I'm going to click code. I went inside the car, it already looks like a G80 cluster. That was simple enough. We'll close this. You want to see green here that tells you everything went fine. We're just encoding it because it had new enough software. But we're definitely not done here. As you can see, it's all red. There's things we need to change. One of the main reasons I wanted to do this is so I could have oil temperature instead of coolant temperature since this car is making the same type of power as a G80. We're going to change that logo. We don't want it to say M3. So we're going to read the coding data. Hit close. Expand this out. Go to the yellow configuration file and SVT compare view. To fix the red line issue, we're going to search for MSYS. So this MSYS here, we got to expand this out. Go over here. This is active. You want to change this to not active. And then over here, MSYS APPL. Go over here. This should also be not active. Save these. Here we made those changes. We saved them. We're going to click back. And then you just want to click code NCD now. It's just going to push those changes to the configuration file. Close this. As long as you see green, you're good. Now we're going to change the logo. Put that in for the logo. It's currently on an M3 logo. We're just going to do an M logo. Save this. Back. And we'll click code NCD. 
As you can see, that looks better. I'm going to search for DZM. DZM variant is set for an S58. Selecting S63 is more in line with the red lines of this engine. I'm going to code that. Found another value that has to be deactivated. This should be not active. There you go. That's how it should look. We have an M logo instead of an M3 logo. Red line is as low as it could be. It's more like 6500 on this. I have the outcome I was looking for in terms of the gauge cluster. On the heads up display, we have all red for red line. So you got to look into that. So it's HMI Vor Warnfeld Combi. I found the same thing for the HUD in terms of not showing the red line properly. This should be not active. So we'll save this. I'm going to code NCD. Okay, you can make it out now. It's indicating properly. You watched me dial in the gauge cluster and it all worked out quite well. But if you look here, technically we made one flaw and it didn't matter, but it could matter. So I want to explain one thing really quickly here. If you look at the FA, what I told you guys to do is modify this to G80, change this to 31AY, but the production date was left as November 18. There was no G80 back then. So when I clicked calculate, it should not have built the vehicle profile. It should have given me an error unless it was plausible and it didn't matter anyway. And in this case, it did not matter anyway. So we're fine but this could affect things depending on what you're trying to do so keep that in mind if you're ever modifying your fa by changing the whole type of the car now as you had seen previously all we did was read the svt actual and we went down to the combi with the modified vehicle order loaded up at the top we were able to right click here and code and then we encoded it got it to display like a g80 and we went in and changed the custom little values to really dial things in and unfortunately that does not work with the head unit and i'll show you why right now i'm at the head unit now and these swfk files are going to be the software it runs off of and what we would want to see is 56 ae that would be specific to the g80 but if i look at all this i will not find that all i'll find is 56 aa which is g20 so that means that that software is not even loaded on the module right now to be able to manipulate it and then make it display the way we want to so if i were to go back to comfort mode and tell calculating we would read this vehicle order we would save it as just our pure vehicle order okay and then we would read the svt actual and we would save that now when we save it we would choose proper naming convention because people do follow this uh, other ESOS coders it would be svt ist that would be what you put for the actual the way things are right now i've already saved that but if i were to choose a complete flash right now now to get around being able to push that software onto the module the only way to do it is to change the shipment date aka when it left the factory. We're, we're kind of just making up BS here, telling the software that this car came from the factory in November 2011. You can use this 540 as the earliest. And then in terms of what we're gonna upgrade to, I'm gonna use the same software that's on the module right now, because I already updated to it. I showed it earlier in the video. While I calculate this, it's gonna analyze the head unit and it's gonna say, okay, looks like this head unit left the factory around the time a G80 was made. So I, I actually am trying to make a point right now. I left the vehicle order as stock it's just loaded not saved and i loaded the ecu tree as it is now and i told it that the shipment date is going to be after a g80 existed and i told it where i want to target to in terms of software but since it's referencing this fa it should just be all black because i've already updated it should see no need to change things even though i'm selecting a plausible shipment date that would be after a g80 existed I did the most important thing was updating the shipment date, but we're not telling it to look out for there being M software on the head unit. So if I scroll down, you guys watch me actually do this previously. If you notice, you watched me update my head unit and it's all black. There's nothing to really do here. So there's no red. It's not going to change anything. It will basically get skipped based on what I'm doing right now because it's the same version. But if I were to load the M track, FA, which is saying it's a G80, I'm going to do the same thing again, change it back to the same exact shipment date of 2020 11 540. And we're telling it to target the same software that's technically already on there from March of this year, calculate it again. Now we're going to go there and see that we should have an updated file. So now I went down to the head unit and it's going to change things. Main thing I care about is does 56AE pull up because that's M specific software loaded on the head unit instead of 56AA and it's telling me it's going to change it from that to this. So we're going to be pushing the right software now. Since we generated this, we're going to save what we're telling it is going to end up being, which is like the small little change with the 56AE right here. That'll be SOL. 
Now we gotta do the tau calculation based on this. So it looks like I got a couple of warnings regarding the SM2 module, which won't really matter for me here. It's basically saying I'm not even finding the software files that makes this plausible, which is okay. We're not targeting that module anyway. What we had seen based on the tau calculation is it's gonna push a software I want, but the hardware would be changing here, deinstalling and reinstalling hardware. We don't need to do all that. When I go to tau processing, it's listed as steps it plans to do based on the calculation. We don't want that. Now, if I go back to comfort more tau calculating, I'm going to change this to do hardware IDs from the actual SVT. As it is, don't change the hardware ID. So if I click that, it's no longer planning on changing that. It went black, but we still have the software update that we wanted. So that's good. That's how it should be. So I should save this as my target. Now I can recalculate. We still have the detail about that module, SM2, that doesn't matter. Now if I go back to expert mode, tal processing, I'm not gonna load the same file, now I'm gonna reload the calculation. Okay, so that's how we did it. I adjusted my tal calculation to where I said to force the hardware ID based on what's already there, don't change that. So it's not gonna hardware install and deinstall and all that. It's just gonna focus on the software. So, and I told it to reference the M track vehicle order for making sure it makes sense to it. It says this is not executable. If I click on check software availability, which you should do to make sure you have everything if you're trying to do an update, it's saying we're missing something. It's not happy. It's actually saying this hardware didn't even exist at that time, from what I understand. It's one of the modules in my car. So like, why are you taking an old module and trying to use new software on it? It would have been a different type of module. Something along those lines. But, and I wouldn't be able to flash just a head unit right now. If I clicked on this, it wouldn't let me do it. It would still, by default, check for this and then fail the update. Because it doesn't care that you're trying to do one ECU. It still looks at the whole picture. So what I'm going to do is go to Options, Settings, and where it says check software availability before TAL execution, I'm going to uncheck that. And you want to make sure update BCM and update MSM is not selected. By default, it shouldn't be on your car. But this is going to make it so I can actually flash. And now if I click start, it should let me do it for the head unit. Make sure you're selecting the right thing. Now a fail safe that you would normally populate is your target to see if it's going to check between before and after and all things considered and if it makes sense. And it may error out saying, well, hey, this doesn't make sense in terms of the way the car is equipped. You have the option of leaving that blank so that it won't do that fail safe. And you're just going to tell it to follow the exact instructions based on the tail calculation and your modified vehicle order. So if you're doing a retrofit, then you would be leaving this blank to be able to tell it, by the way, this is new. So we're kind of telling it it's new because it's loading software for G80 on the head unit. So I'm going to click start. And you can see it writing the 56AE. Chances are if you guys are following this and you're going to be pushing software, it's going to be based on whatever files are on your computer. So you're probably going to be doing the software update. You could have just jumped to updating the software this way or just to play things safe, you can do the software update in advance and follow this video to a T. Now this may seem like bad news, but it's not actually, I already see my head unit booted up with the proper layout. So we're not worried about this error message. It is normal for it to display red. It's just because in its final check, it got confused by what it saw in the car versus what I told it to load, but it still loaded the software. So we'll hit okay. So here's what I face. I have an M menu and all that. That's great. It thinks the car is a G80, but let me show you something. If I were to hit my driving mode, it changed my cluster, changed my heads up, but I'm not going to be able to see anything happening here. So you wouldn't know which drive mode you're in. Once again, we're not done with this. More to do. But just as a good next step, we can close this out. Chances are, if you have ESIS, you're going to have ISTA on your computer. Once you do a software update like that, it's going to have a whole bunch of errors because the modules in your car will have lost communication. So we're going to clear those errors out and then we're going to do the final code on the module to make it work. As you can see, you got a whole bunch of yellow. We're gonna display this and clear it. Basically all no communication errors. So I'm back in ESIS. So now when I read my vehicle order, it's a G20 because I pulled it from the car. I already have this saved, but you could always save it again. And then I'm going to read the ECU trees. When I go down to my head unit, I will have 56AE in the list now. Now, strangely, I'm gonna default and code this new software with my stock FA. That way we'll be able to see our drive modes. So we're good to go there. So that basically puts things back to stock. Now we'll go over here, read coding data, SVT compare view, search for this HMI brand. It says BMW, we wanna change this to BMW M. Next thing, B-A-U-R-E-I-H-E, -E, right here, go down. This says G20, we wanna change it to 5D, which is for a G80. 
So now it says G80, which equates to 5D. Click Save. Go back. Code NCD. And click Close. So now it's got the M layout. And if I click Sport Mode, I can actually see what mode I'm in. Comfort, Sport. I have to recode Sport Plus and whatnot, which I'll do now to get it back to the way it was beforehand. Okay, so next thing I'm doing, since I encoded the car as my stock vehicle to see the drive modes, I have to change all these settings under this 310M when I'm in the module. So we're gonna start right here. We're gonna go to M vehicle, tell it that it is, say active, HUD. So I'm gonna go through all these. Now, if you see a value that you're unsure of, make it work too. Here I did two words because there was no option for active or not active. I'm skipping this because I already did this. Save this. All right, we're gonna code this now. Did some off-camera testing. All these variables up until Modbus, I didn't change this. I changed everything here except for M drive. That's for all wheel drive. I left that out. It doesn't make a difference anyway, but changed all these values to active if they were inactive or not active. And then I selected this one, SP2018, to active. And then you gotta leave this to inactive if it was on a ID6 car. This is for previous cars but after 2018 it's iDrive 7 so select this one is active so as you can see I got widgets configured and if I were to hit comfort I'll know that I'm in comfort and I can configure my sport that's what a lot of people want with this module and the way you configure the widgets is under the M menu you can go to instrument panel and then you can configure your view these won't do anything that I can configure my heads-up display for M view that's fine but that's the main thing you're worried about so everything will display properly otherwise this will be in the wrong position and it'll overlap underneath the RPM gauge I tried to mess around with changing the car art but it's part of the software I believe because of the way I have things set up where it's triggering the modes and showing it on the display it's not going to show the right car art I can't find a way around it if you guys know put it in the comments and i'll look out for it and you can let others know and just so you know i did modify trim lines it made no difference it's embedded in the software i'm just showing you this i don't really care about this but the startup animation is bmw right now i think some of you guys would want it to show bmw m the coding's in progress as it reboots you should see bmw m on there there you go I just got done recording all my settings as I had them before. I have Comfort, but just as an FYI, Comfort Plus on this module will let the car drive comfortably, but it will trigger this M view if you want it. So you can turn on that feature. I have a video I'll put in the description about how to code Comfort Plus. It's recommended for this module. But now I can see that I'm in Sport Plus. That's perfect when I'm driving. I can easily see what's going on. So I guess the only downside is the fact that we have art that doesn't necessarily match 100%, but it doesn't really bother me. You can't really tell anyway. the trade-offs at this point you have navigation instructions when you put it in sport plus basically when your display is going to look like that now the way they configured this if you put it in comfort plus comfort plus actually gives you the same display so if you have it in comfort plus you'll have this display and then you'll get your turn by turn on the heads up and that'll be whether you're using the factory navigation or if you're using android auto or apple carplay via the appropriate app if i were to activate assistive driving view i won't be able to see anything here and i won't be able to see it there put it back into standard comfort and now you're going to see your proper assistive driving view not sure if you guys would consider that a con or not, but your assisted driving view shows a G80 instead of your actual car, as we see here as well. Not seeing the shift lights in the combi, only seeing the shift lights in the heads-up display based on how things are coded. As far as I can tell, that can be done. I just wasn't able to find the information. When you have it in drive and you move it over to sport, you have no gear indicated there. If I pull the paddle, then I have my gears here and on the heads-up display. 
but I'm, that may be because I have XHP on this transmission, but it's not really a big deal for me, but keep that in mind. So I can live with those trade-offs, no problem, but what I don't like is the lack of assisted driving view in the heads up. Now, if I were to flash this back to stock and code it, I would be able to change this so that the view could be configured for standard or M view. And then if you were to toggle off M view and go back to standard, you may get your assisted driving view back. But as far as I can tell with the software that I had to load on the head unit to be able to see when I switch modes like this, that led to it not allowing for it to have coding to be able to switch it back to see the standard. So really you're just kind of forced to lose your assisted driving view in your heads up. These modes here don't correlate back to what the gauge cluster can understand, but they do when it's in sport mode, just not road. Road is defined different than comfort. And I think that's the main issue here. I've had a number of clown emojis in the comments every time I say that this has got the speed of a G80, but you can kind of tell if you saw my acceleration in those clips, this thing has a power to weight ratio just barely slightly better than a G80 and it feels like it accelerates slightly faster than the one I had. It makes good torque and it has similar wheel horsepower and it weighs a little bit less. And does the G80 have insane potential? Absolutely. You could just throw a few thousand bucks at it and make like 300 extra wheel horsepower. This in no way compares to a G80 in terms of potential, but it was pretty awesome the fact that you could double the power it makes on the stock bottom end and I've been enjoying that. And I think it's relevant to have that display active because there are times when you're ripping through first gear and this thing finishes it so fast that you're going to want to know when it's time to shift. You put the simplest mods on a G80 and would absolutely smoke this thing. I'm just trying to make a point of what type of speed you could reference. Coming up in a future video we're going to be installing a heat exchanger on this car. And we'll also be installing an upgraded intake manifold. So mission accomplished in terms of getting what I wanted out of this module. It was primarily to get me a track focused view on my gauge cluster in Sport Plus mode and the full size RPM gauge on the heads up display and primarily the shift indicator on the heads up display. That way while it's going a little squirrely in first and second gear I can keep my eyes on the road and shift at the right time. So I did spend about a week or so messing around with the assisted driving view to see if I could get it to pop up in comfort mode and I wasn't able to get it done. So if you guys have any contributions or have any know-how about how to do that, please leave it in the comments and then we'll address it. Thanks for watching.